In 2010, Beanox gave the world Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, one of the Webhead's finest video games. In doing so, they proved themselves as a strong development team and one worthy of shouldering the responsibility of creating future titles starring the character. Four years and three games later, though, Beanox has released The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and sadly, much of the early confidence is gone. As a result, we're left with one of the worst Spider-Man games this side of Spider-Man 3. As far as movie tie-ins go, Beanox's latest has far less to do with the new film than their previous tie-in to The Amazing Spider-Man in 2012. While Harry Osborn and Electro show up briefly, the majority of the story is dedicated to the rise of the Kingpin, with major roles played by Craven the Hunter and Cletus Cassidy. I'm all for experiencing a different story than the film, but the plot is extremely predictable and plays on familiar beats from Spider-Man history. Worse yet is that the game plays as a weird pseudo-sequel to the last Beanox game, which was itself a sequel to the movie. Really, the game screams to be removed from the shackles of a licensed product, which is unfortunate given how successfully they kept the plate spinning last time. That's some serious heat. One thing that does carry over well from the last game is the great web-swinging mechanics. The web rush system has been improved, allowing for greater control in how gracefully you zip through the Manhattan skyline. On top of that, the city looks great, which is good given how much time you'll spend zipping around looking for collectibles, completing races, and rescuing civilians. Sadly, the city itself is perhaps Spider-Man's greatest enemy in this game. Like a relic of 2008, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 features a morality system, though it's easily one of the most punishing and poorly implemented ones I've ever encountered. You see, your hero or menace ranking have absolutely nothing to do with specific choices you make in the plot. Instead, it's all a way to handcuff the player into fighting random street crime. I'm just asking the question. Is it coincidence Spider-Man shows up at a fire and fails to put it out? Or was he there because... He said it. With supervillains terrorizing the city, Oscorp has started a task force dedicated to cleaning up the streets. Though Spider-Man's a hero, the Daily Bugle smear campaign causes your public opinion rank to fall constantly. As soon as it hits red, progressively worse countermeasures are deployed against Spidey, including energy nets, gun drones, and even giant hunter mechs. This would all be fine if the game gave you a chance to breathe, but by the last third of the game, your rank falls almost faster than you can fight crime to keep it up. It doesn't help that the crimes in question are the same uninspired types that have been rolled out in every open-world Spider-Man game, including car chases, fire rescues, and thug fights. The highlight of the side content comes in the form of infiltrating Russian hideouts hidden throughout the city. These segments require a stealthier approach, turning each encounter into a puzzle. Sadly, there's only five of them in the game, but at least they each reward you with a new spider suit to play in. However, talking about stealth gets us to one of the biggest problems with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is just how many cues this title takes from Rocksteady's Batman games. The simplified combat and counter system were present in the last game, but things are taken to a whole new level here. Spider-Sense casts the area in a deep blue, allowing you to track enemy movements. You can also stealth take down enemies, as well as find audio logs from some of the supervillains. And Black Cat has never felt more like a Catwoman ripoff, trying to talk Spidey into giving up the superhero game and running away with her. Heck, there's an entire museum level that feels straight out of Arkham City. It all gets back to that lack of confidence I mentioned earlier, as if Beanox no longer has it in them to try new things. Also, with two years between titles, it's astounding that this is the best they could come up with. The combat is as unpolished as it was in the last game, and the new gadgets Spidey acquires add nothing to the experience. Not even the bosses offer anything unique, as they all play as souped-up versions of the basic enemies. I dare say Jonah Jameson will praise me as a hero after I kill you. It's sad to think that this is the best game the team that brought us Shattered Dimensions and Edge of Time has to offer. A bad tie-in game is one thing, but to see a title that so shamelessly lifts from another team's design is unfair to a character as beloved as Spider-Man. I hate to say it, but it might be time for Activision to hand the web shooters over to a different development team. Better to risk someone else giving us a unique new vision of the character than endure another stale entry in the Arkham Arachnid series when the Amazing Spider-Man 3 swings in.